Oleg of Novgorod, Russian, comma Elb Norse, Helgi, was a Varanian prince, or Konun, who ruled all or part of the Rus people during the early 10th century. He is credited by with moving the capital of Rus from Novgorod the Great to Kiev and, in doing so, he laid the foundation of the powerful state of Kievan Rus. Although, according to archaeology, Novgorod did not exist during claimed by chronicle period of time of his appearance in Kiev. He also launched at least one attack on Constantinople, capital of the Byzantine Empire. According to East Slavic chronicles, Oleg was supreme ruler of the Rus from 882 to 912. This traditional dating has been challenged by some historians, who point out that it is inconsistent with such other sources as the Skteleta which mentions the activities of certain Kagan HLGW of Rus as late the 940s, during the reign of Byzantine Emperor Romanus I. The nature of Oleg's relationship with the Rurikid ruling family of the Rus, and specifically with his successor Igor of Kiev, is a matter of much controversy among historians. According to the primary chronicle, Oleg was a relative, likely brother-in-law, of the first ruler, Rurik and was entrusted by Rurik to take care of both his kingdom and his young son Igor. Oleg gradually took control of the Dnieper cities, captured Kiev, previously held by the Varanian warlords, Arskild and Der, and finally moved his capital from Novgorod there. The new capital was a convenient place to launch a raid against Zagrad, Constantinople, in 911. According to the chronicle, the Byzantines attempted to poison Oleg, but the Rus leader demonstrated his oracular powers by refusing to drink the cup of poisoned wine. Having fixed his shield to the gate of the imperial capital, Oleg won a favorable trade treaty, which eventually was of great benefit to both nations. Although Byzantine sources did not record these hostilities, the text of the treaty survives in the primary chronicle. The primary chronicle's brief account of Oleg's life contrasts with other early sources, specifically the Novgorod First Chronicle, which states that Oleg was not related to Rurik, and was rather a Scandinavian client prince who served as Igor's army commander. The Novgorod First Chronicle does not give the date of the commencement of Oleg's reign, but dates his death to 922 rather than 912. Scholars have contrasted this dating scheme with the epic reigns of roughly 33 years for both Oleg and Igor in the Primary Chronicle. The Primary Chronicle and other Kyivan sources place Oleg's grave in Kiev, while Novgorodian sources identify a funerary barrow in Ladoga as Oleg's final resting place. In the Primary Chronicle, Oleg is known as the Prophet. Comma, an epithet alluding to the sacred meaning of his Norse name, priest. According to the legend, romanticized by Alexander Pushkin in his ballad The Song of the Wise Oleg, it was prophesied by the pagan priests, Volks, that Oleg would take death from his stallion. To defy the prophecies, he sent the horse away. Many years later he asked where his horse was, and was told it had died. He asked to see the remains and was taken to the place where the bones lay. When he touched the horse's skull with his boot a snake slithered from the skull and bit him. Oleg died, thus fulfilling the prophecy. In Scandinavian traditions, this legend lived on in the saga of Orvirod, Oleg of the Skteleta. According to the primary chronicle, Oleg died in 912 and his successor, Igor of Kiev ruled from then until his assassination in 945. The Skteleta, a document written by a Jewish Kaiser, a contemporary of Romanus I. Lekopneus, describes the activities of a Rus warlord named HLGW, Hebrew, comma usually transcribed as Helgu. For years many scholars disregarded or discounted the Skteleta account, which referred to Helgu, often interpreted as Oleg, as late as the 940s. Recently, However, scholars such as David Christian and Constantine Zuckerman have suggested that the Skteleta's account is corroborated by various other Russian chronicles, and suggests a struggle within the early Rus polity between factions loyal to Oleg and to the Rurikid Igor, a struggle that Oleg ultimately lost. Zuckerman posited that the early chronology of the Rus had to be redetermined in light of these sources. Among Zuckerman's beliefs and those of others who have analyzed these sources are that the Kaisers did not lose Kiev until the early 10th century, rather than 882. The traditional date, 
that Igor was not Rurik's son but rather a more distant descendant, and that Oleg did not immediately follow Rurik, but rather that there is a lost generation between the legendary Vrainan Lord and his documented successors. Of particular interest is the fact that the Skdalet account of Oleg's death, namely, that he fled to and raided FRS, tentatively identified with Persia, and was slain there, bears remarkable parallels to the account of Arab historians such as Ibn Miskawai, who described a similar attack on the Muslim state of Aran in the year 944-5. In contrast to Kaman's version, the primary chronicle and the later Kiev chronicle place Oleg's grave in Kiev, where it could be seen at the time of the compilation of these documents. Furthermore, scholars have pointed out that if Oleg succeeded Rurik in 879, as the East Slavic chronicles assert, he could hardly have been active almost 70 years later, unless he had a lifespan otherwise unheard of in medieval annals. To solve these difficulties, it has been proposed that the pagan monarch priests of Rus used the hereditary title of Helgu, standing for holy in the Norse language, and that Igor and others held this title. It has also been suggested that Helgu Olg who waged war in the 940s was distinct from both of Rurik's successors. He could have been one of the fair and great princes recorded in the Russo-Byzantine treaties of 911 and 944 or one of the archons of Rus mentioned in the Administrando Imperio. Regrettably, the primary chronicle does not specify the relations between minor Rurikid princes active during the period, although the names Rurik, Oleg, and Igor were recorded among the late 10th century and 11th century Rurikids. George Ivanadsky even identified the Oleg of the Skteleta with Igor's otherwise anonymous eldest son, whose widow Pradeslava is mentioned in the Russo-Byzantine Treaty of 944. Alternatively, v. Yeah, Petrukin speculated that Helgu Olga of the 940s was one of the vernacular princes of Chernigov, whose ruling dynasty maintained especially close contacts with Kuz area, as the findings at the Black Grave, a large royal kugan excavated near Chernigov, seem to testify. However, the academic mainstream has not endorsed either of these theories.